Hello Calc AB Kids. Uh, we are starting Unit 4 on uh, interpreting derivatives and what are derivatives good for. So um, today's lesson on Section 4.1, interpreting the derivative in context. I kind of feel like we talked about this uh, way back when, um, when we first started introducing derivatives. But So it should be an easy section. It's pretty short. I'm not going to rewrite these from scratch, uh, but I will do some examples from scratch. So let's just talk about what this section's doing. It's uh, recalling that, remember, slope is the same thing as the derivative. Slopes and derivatives are the same thing. And if I want to find a derivative or find the slope, it's the change in y over the change in x. Um, sometimes you can say it's a change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. We remember it as being like a picnic table, remember that, with martini glasses on top. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, that's kind of how we've talked about it in years past. So uh, what are the units? For derivatives, a lot of these in this section are real-world examples, so they're going to have some type of unit to them. So the unit is whatever the unit is for f over the unit for x. Or you could say uh, for the derivative of this, the unit, yeah, the unit for the function divided by the unit for x. A lot of times it's like meters per minute. Um, you might see miles per hour. Those types of things are what you're looking for. When the slope is positive, um, for this one. When the slope is positive, then the function's increasing. Makes sense, right? Positive slope. Uh, when the slope is negative, the function is decreasing. Here's a picture of a line with a negative slope. So it's decreasing. And then we get to the examples. So Mr. Sullivan wants Mr. Bruce to fin finish creating his packets in Algebra 2. The number of packets Mr. Bruce has completed is modeled by P of W, where W is measured in weeks, Interpret P of 10 equals 1 in the context of the problem. Well, look at what's inside the parentheses. W is inside the parentheses. W is the weeks. So 10 represents how many weeks? The 1 represents how many packets that he creates. So I'll put a packet here. So after 10 weeks, Mr. Brust has completed one packet. That's what that means. The 10 represents the weeks, the 1 represents the packets. So if I go to the second piece here, 1b, now interpret p prime. Well, p prime is a rate of change, it's a derivative. Derivatives are a rate of change. Maybe we want to put that in the margin. Derivative equals a rate of change. And they're exactly the words that you want to use when you see these. So because this one's a derivative, the derivative is some kind of rate of change. What's the rate that he's making these packets? And that's what this question is saying. The 39 still represents the weeks, and the 4 represents the packets. So what does this mean? On the 39th week, Mr. Bruce is making packets at a rate of, you need to literally use those words, at a rate of, 4 packets per week. Okay, so this one is a rate of change, a derivative. This is like a first derivative type thing. So this was the original function. This is now the derivative, which is a rate of change. So the second one brings up an, a new thought here, same idea. Mr. Kelly's buying baseball cards per year at, as modeled by B of T, where T is measured in years. But look at what they use. They use this word rate. So in other words, what they're really giving you here is the first derivative. They're telling you that he's, he's buying these cards, um, and they're giving you the rate at which he's buying the cards. So when you do this, you are looking at b of 3 is actually like a first derivative to this. So the 3, got to think about what this represents. 3 is in the parentheses. That's the t. t is years. The 150 is your baseball cards. But again, this one's a rate. So on the third year, or in the third year, Mr. Kelly is buying cards at a rate of, you've got to use those words, 
150 cards per year. So because the original was a rate, this first piece is a rate. And you see it's different than what number one was. Well, number one, they didn't use the word rate. So you didn't have to do that. But when they ask you now in part 2b to find the derivative of this, that's the rate of the rate. That's like a second derivative. So guess what? You have to use the word rate twice. It has to be two times. In this case, when it's the first derivative, you're just using it once. But this one, you have to use the word rate twice. So I'm going to put it in, in uh, my margin. I'm going to put um, rate twice. Use that word twice. 4 represents years. 10 represents baseball cards. So let's see what we got. On the fourth year, the rate at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards is increasing. Do you know why it's increasing? Because this 10 is positive. If that number were negative, it would be de decreasing. So it's increasing. So let me start again. On the fourth year, the rate at which Mr. Kelly is buying baseball cards is increasing at a rate of 10 cards per year squared. Now this one is year squared because remember, it, this original one was a rate, and that was cards per year. This one is now the next derivative, so it's cards per year per year, or cards per year squared. And that's it. That's the whole notes for this section. We're going to try three problems, and that's the end of our lesson for the day today. So number three was the first one you guys chose in class. So we'll look at this guy. It has the word rate. It has the word rate in it. So, and I'm looking for a rate prime. So that means I need to use that word rate twice, right? It's just like the one we just did a second ago. So the rate at which a factory produces baseball hats can be modeled by B of T, where B of T is the number of hats produced per hour, and T is the number of hours since the factory opened. So the one is my hours since the factory opened and the hundred is the number of hats produced uh, per hour hats per hour remember it's a rate here it is B of T is the number of hats produced per hour so what's the prime of that going to be we know the hours so at one hour The rate of hats produced is, is it increasing or decreasing? Go back and look. The 100 is positive, so it's increasing at a rate of, there's my second word rate, 100 hats Per, well, it was hats per hour for this, so one more is hats per hour squared. So that was a rate, and then you're taking, it's like taking the second derivative. So you have to use that word rate twice, and that's what you're doing. So that's number, number three. Number six was the next one y'all chose in class, so we're going to look at that guy. Number six. This one also had the word rate in it. And I'm looking for the derivative of that. So again, it's going to be a double rate word thing. The rate at which the temperature is changing is modeled by T of H, where T is measured in degrees per hour. And H is the hour since midnight. So interpret T prime of 20 equals negative 0.5. So let's see. Uh, hours is my, my 20. The negative 0.5 is the degrees per hour. I'll just use the degree symbol there for that. Let's try the same thing. So 20 is hours. At 20 hours, you could include past midnight. The rate of temperature change is, is it increasing or decreasing? Go back to your answer here, your y value. 
It's negative this time, so it's decreasing. Here's your words again. At a rate of, your second word rate, at a rate of, now, it's 0.5 degrees per hour squared. But I have a question for you to think about. Should this be a negative? Is decreasing at a rate of negative 0.5 degrees per hour squared? And the answer is, because see how you have a negative up here? The answer is no, you took care of that by using the word decreasing. That decreasing took care of letting everybody know that this is a negative 0.5 degrees per hour squared. So you don't have to say it again, it's, it's like a redundancy. You'd be almost like a double negative. You don't want to do that. All right, here comes the last one. Number nine was the last one you asked about. Number nine was kind of tricky because the situation's a little bit different. Uh, let's see. The time it takes for a chemical reaction to occur can be modeled by T of A, where T is time in minutes and A is the catalyst used, measured in milliliters. Find T prime of 40. This one did not use the word rate. So this one we don't have to do the double rate rate thing going on. This one's just straight up. They give you the function here, T of A. Well, in the parentheses is A. A represents the catalyst used. All right. And the 1.7 would be uh, your millimeters measured in, I'm sorry, 1.7 would be uh, your, where T is measured in time in minutes and A, so this is time. Actually minutes I should put, right? That would make life a little bit easier, minutes. Um, this catalyst uses in milliliters. Now see all the rest of those, like at 20 hours? This one is uh, when you've got 40 milliliters of this catalyst. So when 40 milliliters of catalyst, C-A-T-A-L, are used, The reaction is it increasing or decreasing? So go to the 1.7. It's increasing. Reaction is increasing at a rate of, can you still see me? Yeah, at a rate of 1.7. Well, that's in minutes and it's per milliliter. We don't need the square on that because remember this is like a first derivative type situation. So it's just minutes per milliliter. And there you go, there's section 4.1. Shoot me an email if you've got any questions and I'll see you soon for 4.2.